Welcome back to The Painting Coach, where I show you how to take what's in the box and paint it so that it looks like what's on the box. This week we're painting a rubric marine for the Thousand Suns, so sit back, enjoy the video, let's get painting. So we're going to paint Thousand Suns, and uh, in terms of how I built the model, I've just done it with, uh, I've left the arms and the backpack off, so I've got those just there, so I've already started painting to give myself a little bit of a head start. So what I want to do um, is I want to base the blue areas first, so the colour I'm going to use for this is Thousand Suns Blue. Now there's quite a lot uh, on the model, but take your time and try not to get into any of those areas where you've got uh, the gold trim, so don't paint the gold trim now you're gonna to have to take your time here but this is definitely the quicker way uh, of doing it this way round rather than sort of painting everything blue and then having to go back in and do the gold trim so work your way around get all the blue areas covered leaving that gold trim as best you can and then when we come back we'll have a look at shading it down Once you've got all that blue done and you're, you're happy with it, you see I've not been the tidiest in the world, but it's not the end uh, of the world because we can go and tidy it after. I'm going to take some Drakenhof Nightshade. Make sure you don't have too much on your brush. Uh, and just paint this into those, uh, or paint it over the blue, uh, into some of those recesses. Take your time with this again because we don't really want to spill it onto the uh, the gold if we can help it again not the end of the world if we do uh, but it's just less to tidy up later so work your way around getting that done when you come to some of the bigger areas such as on the, the kind of the backs of the legs here you don't have to paint the whole thing which want to just want to edge along next to the gold because it just saves a bit of, bit of clean up time for later on so get that all done and then when we come back we'll uh, We'll tidy it up first, and then we'll uh, we'll highlight the blue. Once that Drakenhof nightshade is dry, you just want to go back in with the Thousand Suns blue, and, and just where perhaps you've put a little bit too much, just tidy up and clean clean around, so that you've got the Drakenhof in the recesses, and then you've got the Thousand Suns blue, the lighter blue around the rest of the armour. So nice and easy again, taking your time, use the tip of the brush to work it in there if you need to, and then we'll come back and highlight the blue armour next. To highlight this chap, we're going to use a Lothan Blue. Now I've thinned it down a little bit so it flows off the brush. You can see on the palette there it's not that thick. Um, and essentially what we're looking to do is where we've got edges like this, we're going to just catch them and then paint down any any hard edges and when we've got the internal parts we're going to paint around just leaving that Drakenhof nightshade in the recess and we're going to use the use the uh, Lothan blue to to highlight it so work your way around the model taking your time if you make any mistakes here don't worry because all you do is you just go back to that thousand suns blue and you can paint over it and that'll help you get a really crisp line so work your way around all of the model get those highlights in and then we'll come back and we'll jump onto some of the materials before we uh, we go on towards the gold hopefully you got some nice shiny blue armor after that so next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take some of bad and black and use this for all the kind of straps so we've got the bit that goes across the model here now my bad and black is fairly thin down so I may need a couple of coats to cover it uh, and the other thing we want to do as well is we just want to do the joints uh, the armor joints as well so nice and easy any gun casings etc do those and then we'll come and highlight the next once all that black is painted, we want to highlight it and we want to try and catch 
it's the shape of the model with Mechanica standard grey just makes the highlighting tighter and a bit easier so work your way around all the black don't forget the weapon casing and then we'll come back to do the white cloth next let's base up this cloth then and the colour I'm going to use is Corax White and I'm just conscious that on my palette it's fairly thin uh, so just want to work it down being careful when we get to the bottom so that we don't go over the gold same at the top there really uh, again if you do not the end of the world because we're going to go over the gold before we actually do it because the gold will be the the last thing that we do so get that done uh, you may need two coats you may need three depending on how much you've thinned it down and then we'll come back and shade it all While we're waiting for the first coat of Corax White to dry on the cloth, uh, I did forget to say that we're going to paint all the gems, uh, etc., on the model with Corax White as well. I'm just going to paint these eyes. So don't worry about being messy around the eyes because it's easier to just go in and tidy up the gold after. So just get a nice bit of coverage worth of, uh, of white in there. Get any gems you can see painted as well, things on the shoulder pads. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll do that cloth shading next. To shade that cloth, I'm just going to take some apothecary white contrast paint and paint this all over it. So, nice and simple step. Let that dry fully. Now, I'm going to let this model dry and make sure that he, he dries flat or at least just only slightly. If I stand him up, like that all that contrast paint is going to run to the bottom i don't want that to happen so i'm going to dry that or make sure he dries as flat as possible now that that's dry highlighting is really easy a little bit of white scar where we can let's just pull it down the shape of the model all these dots as well and gems that we've done paint those i'm just gonna where we can't pull it down I'm just going to use a steady hand don't worry about those wild eyes we're going to tidy all that up later so there we are we'll do the silver metallics next so i'm going to base up the silver and the reason i've got the weapon is because this is where the most silver is so it's easier for me to show you um and we're just going to paint the barrels here with iron hand steel Again, nice nice and easy, not a complicated task. Just take your time, be careful when you come to those bits, which are going to be gold when you finish it all off. So get that done all over the model. If you're not sure which bits you're doing, check the box art, check the Games Workshop website, and we'll shade it next. To shade that silver, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a really easy shade of null oil. Just work it over all the silver, as ever being careful of bits you may have already finished. Let that dry and we'll come back and highlight it all next. Once we're happy that that null nile is dry, just going to take some chrome, tiny little bit. If you haven't got chrome you can use uh, Stormhole Silver. I'm just going to use this to highlight along the kind of the raised edges where you're going to get some reflection nice and simple do that round all the metallic bits and then uh, i think we'll come on and we'll get to work on all the gems next for all the gems on this chap i'm going to use volupus pink contrast paint now you can use whatever color contrast paint you want but you can see there straight away you get that really cool gem effect just painting it over the white that you've got in there so do that on all your gems across the model and we'll come back and now I'm going to do the, the eyes next I'm also going to do the the, the kind of the flamer there um, the, the fuel pot for the flamer the color I'm going to use for the eyes is going to be some hex wreath flame which is kind of like a green color I'm just going to paint it into those recesses like that now, if that's what it looks like, that's probably a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is going to clean my brush off and just take away, leaving it in those kind of deepest recesses like that. 
and then just keep playing with it until you're happy with the uh, the green effect that you get. I said I was going to do the flamer uh, fuel as well. I'm just going to paint that with the hex ray flame until I get the colour I want. Before we get involved with uh, getting all the gold fixed, what we want to do is we want to base the yellow stripes. So uh, in terms of this model, we've got the them on the headdress, we've got them on the leg. Uh, just using some Avalan Sunset, just paint these stripes. Now it's fairly thin, so I'm going to need um, probably two coats to get it uh, to get it done. Just be neat and tidy. And then what I'm going to do once I finish the Avalanche Sunset is I'm going to take Retro Drama Gold and I'm going to tidy up all the gold so that it's nice and sharp again. And then we're going to shade all these together. So you can see I've tidied up that gold and that yellow has dried as well. So what I want to do is shade the gold and the yellow and I'm going to use Reichland Flesh Shade for this. So obviously you need to be really careful around those parts you've already finished. Um, and obviously not flooding any areas either but just get that on there make sure you get it into those recess parts in particular so that you've got some nice shadow and then once that's all done we we'll let it dry and then we'll come back and then we'll start to highlight the gold next we'll highlight the yellow and we're not far off being done once that's all dry we'll drop onto the yellow first so we want to just go back to some avalanche sunset and just paint some thin lines towards the top. I'm going to do this over all the yellow you've painted and then we'll come back in and highlight it next. So work around the avalanche sunset and we'll be back shortly. To add a highlight to that yellow, I'm going to just take some dawn yellow, which is a much brighter yellow. Uh, than the Avalanche Sunset. I'm just going to paint a thin line across the top. Don't worry if you make a mistake like I did there, you can just go back in with your Avalanche and tidy it all up. So get that done and we'll come and highlight the gold next. So let's uh, make a start highlighting this gold. So the colour we're going to use is Liberator Gold. And the main thing we're going to look to do is just catch any edges that we can. So where the model is sculpted, obviously, we want to run the brush along that because it'll give us a nice uh, sharp highlight. And then we just want to bring it down into there, leaving those the kind of the ready colour in the recesses. So really nice and easy, really straightforward. Get that done. And then when we come back, we'll add another little bit just to really make that gold pop. Uh, and then I think we're pretty much done. Pretty happy with how that gold is looking. Uh, but I just want to add some bright spots into it. I'm going to do this with some chrome. This is optional, but really all I'm looking for is just those corners. The sharpest edges, just making them shine that little bit brighter. And the other thing I thought we were done, but I've kind of reflected on the armour a little bit, and I think I just want to make the armour pop a little bit more, so we're just going to do one more step on that. We'll do that next, and then we'll uh, we'll have a look on the turntable. Just to make that armour pop a little bit more, take some blue horror, just pop this on the most extreme edges of the armour, things like you know the finger joints, etc. So just work your way around, use it fairly sparingly. If you put it on too thick, don't worry, you can always go back in and fix it. So, like I said, little dots, nothing too extreme. Get that done, and then when we come back, we'll have a little look at him on the turntable. Obviously, we'll put everything together, and we'll go from there. So there we have it. This Thousand Suns Rubric Marine is done and ready for the tabletop. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure I'm creating the kind of content you want to see. If you'd like to support me and the channel, you can do so using the links in the description. There's a link for my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me via my Discord, a monthly live frequently asked question show on YouTube, as well as some exclusive content and the occasional giveaway. There's also the link for Goblin Gaming where you can get up to 20% of all your wargaming needs. And there's also my Amazon affiliates where you can see some of my recommended products. 
Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.